Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. You know, that when we are praying warfare prayers, we, we, you pray at night, you pray in the morning, before the service commences, we pray. Some people get a little bit weary and they tell themselves, do we have to pray all the time? Does he have to be aggressive all the time? Everything God gave to you as a weapon is to fight. There is not a single weapon that God gave to you to stay idle. Every weapon. Why would God give you weapons? He said the weapons of our warfare. If God gives you weapons, it's because he wants you to fight all the time. And there is something about guns, if you're carrying guns. Um, let me get one of these policemen there. Drop your gun and come. Peter, come. Drop your gun. Give, so, give another policeman your gun. I want to ask you a question. Let's see something. You have been a policeman for how long? Ten years. If you have a bullet in a gun for two years and you don't use the bullet, what happens? Huh? It will be Steve. Mean it, it will not shoot shoot again. Again. Yes, sir. That's what happens when you are a believer with weapons, you don't use them. You are armed, you are loaded, but you don't use them. So they don't work. Are you following what I'm saying? So when you have a gun, a bullet inside a gun, and you leave it for a long time, it becomes stiff. Sometimes, even those who carry the gun will tell you, sometimes you have to oil it. You have to grease it for it to work. That's what, that's what we speak in tongues. When we speak in tongues, we are oiling. The Bible says, no, no, speaking in tongues does not help God. The Bible says, praying in your most, building yourself in your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. When you are praying the Holy Ghost, it is you, it helps, it builds you, it charges you. Are you following what I'm saying? It charges you. No matter how anointed you are, if your phone battery runs down, you need a charger. He it it has no respect for speaking in tongues. It needs a charger. So once you are down, you just charge up yourself. And that's what we do. We're going to pray. Are you ready? The Lord told me three days ago while I was in the place of prayer. I said, son, begin to pray for my children. That's pray for believers. That's how it communicates to me if he's giving a message for the body of Christ. He said, pray for my children. I said, why? He said, most of them get blessing, but they get slippery blessings. Blessings that slip by. Helpers that come around. Some people can't keep a helper for one month. There must be something that will make the person walk away. Slippery blessing. Slippery. That was what happened to the, the Shunammite woman. She got the blessing, but the son died. If she had no good relationship with the man of God, the son would not have come back to life. Slippery breakthroughs. You see opportunities and they slip by. Are you ready to pray? Yes, Say, my father, my father. Mon père, mon père. Shout it louder than that. Que cela. Mon père, mon père. As I begin to pray, que je prie, I reject sleepy blessing. Open your mouth and say your prayers. Je rejette les bénédictions retardées. Pendant que je prie maintenant, mon père, je rejette les bénédictions retardées. Je rejette les bénédictions retardées. Je rejette les bénédictions retardées. Je rejette les I reject slippery blessings. My God. I reject Jesus Amen. Lift your hands to heaven. Your name is Jesus. 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 There 
something about your name. I call you Master, Savior, Jesus, like a fragrance after the rain. I will call you Jesus. Your name is Jesus. my Master.
to give you the glory tonight throw your weight around and prove to the devil that you are master let the sick be healed let the lost be found rescue the bound and let every destiny lost be recovered in Jesus name I pray give God a mighty clap offering hallelujah you may be seated in his wonderful presence amen while I was praying the Holy Spirit spoke to me to see I can run through what the last fire night we had started something but there was an emergency and the Holy Spirit while I was praying the Holy Spirit spoke to me to run through that defeating Pharaoh in his own house and <clears throat> I want us to understand that seasons are changing something strange is about to happen in your life I don't like that amen at all defeating Pharaoh in his own we took our, our reading from Exodus chapter 7 Exodus chapter 7 verse 3 and verse 4 and I will harden Pharaoh's heart and multiply my signs and what? and wonders in the land of Egypt but Pharaoh shall not hearken unto you that I may lay my hand upon Egypt and bring forth mine enemies and my people the chi my armies rather and my people the children of Israel out of the land of Egypt by what? by great by great I started with us and I began to show to us that when Moses was sent by God into the land of Egypt, when he, he came to Pharaoh with confidence and boldness, but Pharaoh made jest of Moses' order because Pharaoh had 10 major gods that were his backups. Pharaoh had 10 powerful gods that he, he depended on. And God had to release 10 plagues to silence the 10 gods. When the ten plagues came on the ten gods, Pharaoh had no choice. He chased them out. And I said to us that the reason we see certain confrontations and they appear insurmountable, why certain people can look at us and they can make certain boasts is because there are certain things they depend upon. And I want you to know that one thing God is going to do tonight is that God is going to frustrate the confidence of your enemies. God is going to frustrate the backbone of your enemies. That which they depend on, that which they trust, that which is their strength, that which they see as their pillar, that makes them stand and they appear untouched. They appear like nothing can happen to them. There is a word from heaven by the power of the Holy Spirit. Every confidence of your enemy, today it shall be shattered. If your amen is louder, your life will be better. And last, please take your seat. I have treated four. I'll just run through it now. The first was in Exodus 7 from verse 10 to verse 12. And I said that was when Moses dropped his rod and it became what? A serpent. And I explained to us that the first God, if you study science very well, you discover that the, the symbol of science is a rod and a serpent science medicine rod and serpent is their symbol so the first thing god did was to handle the god of science there are many people who have become captives because of science some of them have been told medical stories some people have medical history they have they have they have a, a doctor that has followed them over the years they don't get healed they only get better now listen to me god does not make people better he makes them whole Am I talking to somebody? God does not make people better. He makes them whole. There is a God of science. The God of science is what tells a woman that because she has a tube blockage, she cannot have a child. The God of science is what tells a man because he has a low sperm count, he can't have a baby. The God of science is what tells someone that when AS and AS intermeet, they give birth to SS. But there is a God in heaven. Is there no balm in Gilead? Is there no physician? there 
anyone under the sound of my voice who has become a victim by the God of science, I came to tell you there is a God of miracles. Oh. I said there is a God of miracles. Amen. I said there is a God of miracles. Amen. He's Jehovah Rosetta. <laughs> Jehovah is the doctor. Oh. I don't know the sickness Amen. that came here with you, Amen. but right here you are standing. Oh. There is a healing power. Amen. There is an anointing Amen. to set the captives free. Amen. There is an anointing Amen. for miracles right now. Amen. Maybe it's in your blood. Amen. There is an anointing. Amen. Maybe you have a report oh. from the doctors. Amen. There is an anointing. Amen. God is making you whole. Amen. Sickness is jumping out. Amen. Disease is jumping out. Amen. Lift your hands and shout hallelujah. tell somebody science is a fact but miracle is the truth say science is a fact but miracle is the truth yes they said they saw a fiber that is a fact because they saw it there but there's something that is the truth he was wounded for transgression he was bruised for my iniquity the chastisement of my I don't know the sickness that you are carrying here maybe the doctors gave you a report but today you will see the power of God I said you will see the power of God I said you will see the power of God I said you will see the power of God I said you will see the power of God 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 I command the sickness to go that affliction will go you don't serve a dead God you serve a mighty God he's the same yesterday he's the same today he's the same forever and God says yes the man can say no when God lifts you up the man can bring you down God is on your side power is on your side glory is on your side favor is on your side look the way shot yes Wait, 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 I've already dealt with this before, no, I don't like the way I'm going into it, I've already dealt, now, do you know something, miracle does not argue with science, miracle swallows up science, the rod of Moses swallowed, there's going to be a swallow, when something is swallowed it is not seen it is covered it is it is embedded a prophesy whether you are sitting here or at the emergency not one person is walking out of this place with a medical condition i said not one person is walking out of this hall with a medical condition if your amen is louder you are the one i'm talking to Then the next God was the God of the sea. The Bible says in Exodus 7, verse 20 to 21. And when Moses stretched his rod, the Bible says, and the fish died. Is that in your Bible? Exodus 7, 20 to 21. He said, and the fish died. And I ask you a question. In a sea, do you have just one fish? So you know that it was not physical. He said, he didn't say the fish is died. He said, the fish died. There is a man-made power that controls the sea. If you kill the fish, you have killed the fishes. And the fish died. And I explained to us that the marine world is a wicked world. Isaiah 23 verse 4. He said, and the sea has spoken. I do not nurse up young men. I do not raise up virgins. Behind every sexually promiscuous man or woman is the manipulation of the marine kingdom. You see, I don't nurse up young virgins. I will not permit people to keep themselves. Marine. 
So anytime a man or a woman discover he or she has an unbridled appetite for sexual promiscuity, attack the marine kingdom. They are on your case. He said, and the fish died. Stretch your hand to the altar. Anyone present here whose case is being monitored in the water, oh. I command the fish to die. <laughs> Sit down, sit down, sit down. Number three, I said the frogs. Exodus chapter 8, verse 6. He said, and frogs came out. I spoke to us that fraud, frog speaks of sorcery, magic, magic. And I said to us, most of these false prophets, some of the false prophets, some diabolic people operate under the spirit of magic. Hello? Sorcerers! And you need to be spiritual to detect them. The Bible said there was a lady, a young girl, who was running after Paul for several days. He said, these are the servants of God. That was true. Saul was a servant of God. So, as it were, the demon was saying something that almost appeared like the truth. He said, these are the servants of God. Am I correct? Was, she, was, that, was that not the truth? But how do you know a fake prophecy or a fake prophet? The Bible said, by reason of her gift, she brought much gain to her masters. Any gift that is commercialized is not genuine. She brought gain. When they pray for you and prophesy and you pay for it, it's fake. No matter the accuracy of the prophecy. So that's how we know she was fake. The Bible says one called Elimas the sorcerer. He said that they saw him as a great man in the book of Acts. He was trying to turn the proconsul from the faith. Meaning he was not in the faith. He made money from the, from the gift that he had. Alright? There are four kinds of prophets. Can I tell you? Let me just digress a little bit. There are four kinds of prophets. There are devilish, diabolic, satanic prophets. These are demons. These are young men sent from hell. They, have no, they, have, they are not close to the cross. They are agents, demons, who come out and hold microphones just to ruin lives and ruin destinies. These are agents of the devil, recruited from hell, sent as messengers to the earth to recruit. These are devils. All right? Then there are the, the perverted prophets. He started very well. He was doing very well. But along the line, he needed to meet up. So he began to apply means. Bring this, I'll pray for you. Money came in. Pursuit of money. All right? Was perverted. Perverted. He started well. He's not totally, he's not demonic. He's not devilish. He has an element of God. That's the class of Balaam. Started well. <laughs> Hello? And Balak gave Balaam, he told Balaam, he said, come to me, come and prophesy. Balaam said, I will not take anything from you, but wait, don't go. <laughs> he said, I will not take anything from you, he said, but wait, let me pray. But I know God said no, but, but wait, wait, let me pray. Because he was being now, do you know why Elisha rejected the gift of Naaman? It wasn't because prophets don't collect gifts. There is a God called Raymon. That was the God that was worshipped then where Naaman came from. Before Naaman set out on the journey, Naaman visited that God's shrine. Dropped all the gifts he had on the shrine. And said, as I go to the man of God, let me find favor before the man. So when he came to Elisha, Elisha knew that those gifts have been dedicated to another God. So I cannot collect it. That was why he said, go with your gifts. They asked, he did not know that what was on that gift was leprosy. So it was not rejected because prophets reject gifts, willing gifts, no. But because it was dedicated to a God. That was why he said, I'm not taking this from you. Perverted. Then there are old prophets. That's number three. Old. Old prophets were once on fire. They are no more on fire. 
They are not immoral. They are not material. They are critical. They are not immoral. They are not material. They are critical. They were once like that. But now they are too busy to pray. Too busy to fast. Too weak and too lazy. So they criticize the ones coming up. Huh? Those ones are what? Old prophets. They keep telling you, no! When we started, when we started, it was not like this. When did you start preaching? Where? How long have you been preaching? We started carrying this Bible for long. Those are old prophets. You, an old prophet, can I shock you? They are more dangerous than the first two. <laughs> Because if you pray very well, God will show you a demonic prophet. You see. But old prophets, they know scriptures. It was old prophet that perverted the destiny of young prophets. That is the fourth category. The young prophets. The young prophet has nothing to do with young chronologically. It's not about age. He's young because he's fresh and current with God. He still follows God with the eyes of a teenager. He follows God with the consciousness of one who knows nothing. Am I speaking to somebody? So he said the fourth was the frog. And number four, Exodus 8, 16 to 17, the Bible says, and lies came forth. L-I-C-E. And I spoke of lies, piece of hidden problems. I said, when you have a change in your body, you have lies in your body, you have to be very careful to pick it out. There are many problems that you cannot see with the physical eye. You need prophetic, microscopic, divine intervention for you to be able to locate them. Am I talking to somebody here? But I want to address the fifth one today. Exodus 8 verse 24. Read it out for me. Exodus chapter 8 verse 24. Exodus 8 24. And the Lord did so. And there came a grievous swarm of flies into the house of Pharaoh. And into the house of his servants and into the land of Egypt and the land was corrupted by the reason of the swan in the flies flies that was the fifth god that that pharaoh depend upon ladies and gentlemen flies speaks of witchcraft and i want to tear down the altar of witchcraft in this service today am i speaking to somebody here i came by the power of the holy ghost to tear down the foundation that has been erected by witchcraft in your life in your family every witchcraft spell every witchcraft enchantment every witchcraft divination my bible says there is no enchantment against jacob no divination against israel i have received the commandment to bless and i have blessed and it is not reversible there is a word from heaven a prophetic word from god every witchcraft operation around your life every witchcraft manipulation around your destiny i tear them down i tear them down i tear them down i tear them down lift your hands and shout hallelujah In Deuteronomy chapter 18, verse 10, he said, There shall not be any among you that is a witch. In, in Exodus 22 18, popular verse, thou shall not suffer a witch to live. And that is why I wonder. Those who tell us to preach to witches, it is a wrong prescription. Those who tell us to intercede for witches, it is a wrong prescription. Every witch, now watch me, watch this, watch this. Witchcraft means to bend, to divert something from its original cause. I've taught us before that witchcraft means to use the influence of a strange power
to divert something from its original course. And I told us their strength and their base is the coven. And I told us the coven is made up of 13 people. Six male, six female, one leader. It can't be seven because seven is the number of God. Six is the number of man. Now, I said to us a few things. But ladies and gentlemen, few days ago, God began to show me witchcraft in the church. Watch me. There are three kinds of witchcraft in the church. Number one are those who are sent from the covenant to the church. Some of them enter into departments. Some of them come to church and tie their hair and put all kinds of regalia spiritual and when you look at them with the eyes of the flesh you think this one is a, a, a saint but has been projected from the covenant. There are witches who are in church who have been sent from different covenants around the world and pastors and brothers, heads of departments have got to be careful because they have crept into the church. The second class of witchcraft in the church are those who came as Christians but met witches in the church and they became witches. You don't understand me. They came sincere, genuine, but they met a witch in the church. The Bible says rebellion is at the sin of witchcraft. If you are rebellious, you are a witch. The head of the department say, don't do this and you do it. You are a witch. Pastor say, come this time. You, you, you come your own time. You are a witch. Anytime you are rebellious, you are stubborn. It's not a sign of boldness. It's a sign of witchcraft. When your leader talks and you talk back, it's not a sign that you are bold. It's a sign you are a witch. Number three kind of witchcraft. Don't forget I said number two. They came sincere. But they met witches in the church. And they became witches by association. Number three. Are those who have family witchcraft. And their old family witchcraft has been programmed to hit them at a particular time. There are people who initiate people and they say it's going to manifest when she's 35. It has been programmed for that time and unfortunately that time met her in the church. Are you following what I'm talking about? But I prophesy it doesn't matter the category or the class of witchcraft spell oh. in this church <laughs> or every pastor oh. representing any ministry oh. the power of witchcraft around your church I break them today hey. I say I break them today hey. I break them today hey. look your and shot fire The Bible said the whole world lied in wickedness. This world will never be good. No matter how you prophesy. No matter how you pray. Oh, let this world be a better place. You are joking. You are the only one who has the power and the right to make your own environment better. The world itself can be better. The Bible says it shall go hot. It says perilous times shall come. Perilous times, piece of injury time, dangerous time, critical times. So you have to generate your own atmosphere and make your own surrounding a good one. And I prophesy it shall be so for you. Mm. I want to show you an example of wickedness and the, a manifestation of witchcraft. In Matthew 22, let me show you something. From verse 25 to 27, read for me. Now there were with us seven brethren, and the first, when he had married a wife, diseased, and having no issue, left his wife unto his brother. 
Likewise, the second also, and the third, unto the seventh. And the last of all, the woman died also. He said, with us, there were seven brethren. The first got married to a woman. She died. There was no child. He passed his wife to his second brother. He died. No child. He passed to the third till seven brothers died. That's a pure manifestation of witchcraft. And I'm going to explain. If you study that story, you see four major things. Number one, the principle of the firstborn. Anything that affects the firstborn can affect the whole children. When there is a witchcraft spell in the family, the first major target is the firstborn. And that's why if you are a firstborn here, you are the first one that opened the womb. I came here to say, your head is delivered. <laughs>